This restoration is brought to you by Mr. Cool Do-It-Yourself Mini Split System. Heat or cool your house with a Mr. Cool Mini Split unit and install it yourself. Surely I cannot be the only person that does this. Someone else out there has to or I'm just terribly crazy. I just fabricated a part for the project that I'm about to show you and I can't find it anywhere. Like I'm looking all over my shop. I'm looking everywhere and I can't find it. It's just a simple little T-joint and um, yeah, wish me luck video. If you're watching it, I guess I found it. Okay, so this is where I would say most of your money is, is, is the rigidity of this unit, right? So the cheap ones, they operate on a cam right here, and when you push the lever down, it just squeezes the center together. Well, on this one, the whole bar moves. So this whole bar is rigid enough to where this entire bar will clamp your chain. That's what makes this one so good. So we're going to take it apart. We're going to clean everything up and get it all painted and put it back together. I do this with all my tools that are new to me but are old tools. This is not necessarily a restoration video for you guys that like watching stuff restored. This is a tool restoration. So this is something that I need for my chainsaws that I'm going to use on a daily basis. So I'm more... I, I could use it how it is, but it's such a good heirloom tool, this thing can last forever, that we're going to do a cleanup and a refresh on it. You know, take care of all the little issues that it has and all the loose bolts and you know, just really, really clean it up. So make it look nice as well. I mean, it is a restoration, um, but there's really not a lot of damage to this thing. I don't really see anything that's calling out to me that's saying, hey, um, you have to make new parts. So this is a fun one. I like these because these are quick. I'll start taking her apart. That's cool, huh? I like it. Call me a nerd, but I like to clean all the nuts and bolts off. They'll be dirty the first time I use it, but I don't know. It's my zen moment. You know, a lot of people freak out about, like, oh, that's the wrong tool for the job. I can go fight and look for an Allen wrench, or I can just take that off, grab this, it's, take it out. I mean, these look like they have to be adjustable. Because it has to, or is there, a, is there a washer? Yeah, there's a spring washer in there. That's cool. We'll take these off, I'll show you. Oh, it'll probably fall out. Yeah, there you go. So sandwiched in between there is a spring. 
Oh, it fell down. Oh, and the bottom has a stop. Okay, so the stop goes in there like that. And then springs right there. All right, all right, cool. Okay, this is a power head. Um, since we're talking, we might as well have some fun talking. It's obviously missing a handle right here. Uh, this looks like the, saw, the stop for depth, a very important component. You could cut your saw chain in half with this if this wasn't, um, if you just push on it and this was all the way out. Really? No, oh, that's cool. Allen heads in there. And this is why I like tools so much, man. You just get to see cool stuff. A little bit of grease, and then the, the hinge point is just it's just an Allen hinge point. It's an Allen head, and it's ca held captive by uh, by the bolt, the nut. Sorry. See, it just has a little point on one side, I like that. If it wasn't going into like a five pound casting, it probably wouldn't work. And um, then again, that's another spot you're, you're gonna need to oil. And I, I don't see an oil hole in here anywhere, but you can clearly see that it was oiled right at this spot. So we'll remember to do that as well. I've watched several videos and I've watched people try to take these pins out and they, they kind of destroy them. So I'll show you a couple ways. First, get access from the back. See how thick this casting is? It's hugely thick, but they know you're going to be able to, like, you're going to want to take that out one day. So they through drill those holes. So there's your two holes. Grab your hammer. Ooh. I think it fell up my sleeve. No, there it is. And there you go. Now these always get lost. And if you're trying to polish them, <laughs> which I do all the time, uh, I've shot them across the room before. But I'll uh, show you how to make those one day. Now, the other way to get them off if you don't have access to the back side is grind down a, a piece of metal to a sharp point like a knife almost, but you want like a blade that fits the whole distance. And you start working it in and you tap up underneath the actual part that you're trying to take off. Don't try to get it between this and the part. Bring it up from the bottom of the part. And really I should show you that. I'm not going to because I'm in a hurry. This is not like this is just a quick job I'm trying to do so we're gonna be efficient so grab your hammer again this time I'll be more mindful so I don't shoot this across the room and it's just that simple there you go we've got our, our part off we've got our little brads and this piece is ready for cleanup or paint or whatever you want to do with it There we go. I've got it disassembled. Okay. Well, that feels fantastic. just aluminum oxide so it's not like it's a super expensive stone but I'd like to see what brand it is okay you know it's Foley so they have a they have their own label <laughs> we don't get to see it though <laughs> grab a wrench break everything loose
<laughs> I am so used to working on like extremely rusty stuff. <laughs> this is so easy. It's so nice to have a decently clean tool to work on. Oh. Okay, so this is like really cool how this works. I like this mechanism. You loosen this one and it allows you to pivot, but it keeps it locked in place, right? Tighten that one back up, loosen this one, it'll slide it forwards and backwards, but you can't rotate it. <laughs> I like that, that's neat. Super simple design, uh, very effective, very cool. Okay, so this will go on here. Throw our arbor back in. Bearing assembly. I'm betting this guy gets some washers. Okay, so let me, let me just show you this. This is the one issue with this tool that I have. Uh, there's three degrees of play there, or well, at least a couple degrees of play, so. 
That's what it is. Locked in. Okay. Okay, I've got some new stones coming, but there's plenty of life left on this guy. So we're going to seed them. So this handle came with like a drill and I always save this kind of stuff and um, save it for projects just like this where I need a handle like a more modern handle on something and I think it's going to work perfect so we'll slap it on there. Oh yeah that's super comfortable. It's nice I like the rubberized grip on this this is actually pretty good. Okay, got her mounted up. All I did was make a little T-joint right here and then welded this in because this is going to be something that moves around. I don't want to stand for it. I want to put it on a shelf, right? So I just mount it in my vise. Now, I need to get, I need to run grab a spring right here. A spring goes from here to here. That's kind of evident, like obvious. That's, that's my issue there. And then sometimes the simplest solutions is the way you should go. No hinged foot pedal, no nothing. A tab of metal, watch. Drop it on the ground. Whip it around the right direction, or not the right direction if you don't want it. It'll, it'll work from any position, but anyway, that's it. You can watch the jaws close. Very comfortable, very easy to use, positionable, and stays with the saw, doesn't weigh anything. It's not overly heavy, it's just a little tab, super simple solution. So, and I didn't even take off the wire they put on there. I did restore it though, look at that custom copper restoration. Vapor honed, it's beautiful. <laughs> I like that. I like that a lot. Like simple solutions are great. There you go. It almost just goes into that natural position. Bam. Super easy. I don't know. Let's try left foot. Left foot. Let's go right foot. I'm looking through a camera and I'm kind of hunting for it. My foot. You can just feel where it's at. Yeah. I know someone's going to say, it's not going to work. You should have done that more stable and mounted the whole thing and did a solid bar or whatever. Heck no. That's the way you do it right there. <laughs> All right, I'm going to sharpen some chainsaws. Let's like cue the cool music and clean up the stuff around here and give you guys those pretty shots that you love so much. Okay, so we have the MS201TC. Um, this is a pro saw. Very awesome, very powerful saw. We have a homeowner saw here, which is my least favorite saw. Um, we're going to do some modifications to this one in a future video. And uh, this is a 211C, and this is an Echo homeowner saw as well, uh, 352. And then we have the Pro Saw, the MS441C Magnum. So this one and this guy right here both have the um, uh, chip controlled carburetor, if you will. I really wasn't sure about the technology, but I've seen a lot of guys replace them with a carburetor, and the carburetor performs not quite as good. I can tell you this I tuned this one up inside the shop, I took it outside. And it was warmer in the shop, thanks to Mr. Cool. And uh, yeah, when I got outside, it just doesn't run. So I have to retune it for outdoors during temperature change. Which these, this one and this one, you don't have to do that. And this one and this one, you do. You have to tune them on the fly. That up.
Okay, one chain done. Oh man, that is fantastic. All right, guys, that's it for today. This little saw is a monster. Weighs nothing, has a big old 35cc motor, and it's like two and a half horsepower. It's a beast. But I'm really, really excited to have the chainsaw sharpener. Stay tuned, and you can see like the area that I'm clearing out here. Uh, it's gonna be, it's gonna be pretty awesome. I got a video coming up for you guys on that. So yeah, let's, let's get some work done. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, comment, and uh, we'll see you on the next round. Later.